that's to get some in. They'll tell you now if you ask, you'll get to get some in. So leave your mummy's loving arms, there's no way you can win. You'll win with all your vocal charms, so get some in. The rat's got two years of your life, now isn't that a sin? There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Get some in! Right. There it is. Basic first aid to a fracture using bandages and splints. Now it's your turn. Right, split into pairs. Three is a crowd. Two is a pair. Frightened I'll show them up, Chief. Yes, very probably. Come on, one of you. Flaming Ada, Flora MacDonald. <laughs> First Ada, patient. 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 I shouldn't be the patient, I'm the senior man. I'm afraid even NCOs have been known to break bones, Corporal. You'll get your chance. Right, patience on the floor. I shall now tell the first aiders which particular fracture they're dealing with. You, the left fibula and tibia. <coughs> left fibula and tibia. Wrong end. Oh. And remember the first rule of first aid. Do not touch your patient until you're sure where the fracture is. Aye. Oh, you tartan burk. <laughs> Just keep looking for the fibula and tibia. You, the left ulna. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> Yes, well, we'll assume your patient was conscious and told you where it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's handy, that, though, isn't it? Just don't come to rely on it too often. You, the left radius. What an extraordinary coincidence, Flight Sergeant. What is? Well, once, my best friend, Brian Tinglet, and myself were playing <laughs> Gordon of Cartoon in his back garden. Yes? Well, Brian was being General Gordon on the steps of the veranda, and I was being the Mardi's troops. Well, that is to say, I and Brian's little sister, Dillis, but she was only three, so she was probably too young to grasp the historical significance of the game. Yes? Well, uh, Brian came out onto the steps of the veranda, uh, representing the British residency in Khartoum, and then... Fell down the steps and broke his left radius. Oh, no, 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 no. Just then, Brian's uncle came into the back garden carrying a tray with orange aid and hot cross buns. It was Easter, you see. <laughs> And what is coincidental about that? Well, you bear the most extraordinary resemblance to Brian's uncle. <laughs> the left radius. Right radius. Right ulna. Left fibula. Left clavicle. A metacarpal. <coughs> Have we found them yet? Oh, yeah, flight surgeon. There they are. That limb is supposed to be broken. Oh! You curse waiting git! It's even more broken now, isn't it? What I'm trying to get through to you, and this goes for all of you, is that inside those limbs there could be a bone that is completely broken like that. Like that? The ends could be all scrunched up together. Would you mind holding my glasses, please? <laughs> He does that from time to time. And he's training to be a nursing attendant? He's very good at theory, Flight Sergeant. Oh, good. Good. I'm terribly sorry, Flight Sergeant. Do you want to go outside for a breath of fresh air, lad? No, thank you. I must overcome this fainting business. Good for you. Only this time you be the patient. Not so far to fall if you go again. <laughs> right, now let's come back to the first patient. 
As I said, this is a fracture of two bones, the fibula and tibia, otherwise known as the pot fracture, often characterised by the displacement of the foot outwards and backwards. Could you simulate that for us, Corporal? Yes, Chief. Otherwise known as the pot's factor, it is often characterised by the displacement of the foot outwards and backwards. Pretty folly, pretty folly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask you to repeat it. I asked you to move your foot. Oh, sorry, Chief. I thought you said assimilate. Like that. That will do. Now then, first Ada, you know what fracture you're dealing with, but before you immobilise this limb with your splints, you've obviously got to get the foot back to its normal position, haven't you? You see, it's all flight, Sergeant. I do. <coughs> How? <coughs> Ken would know. Ah, well, I suppose what you do... I is... am asking him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I have got an idea, but uh, I think it might be too obvious. Can I show you? Please do. Well... You just sort of grab hold of the bloke's foot and you twist. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Not unless you know how to deal with a dislocated hip as well. Right. I'll come back to you. You vicious little MacDangling whelk. <laughs> you did that on purpose, didn't you? I didn't. You wait, I'll have you for this. You wait till they learn us how to amputate. I'll cut your arms and legs off and turn your torso into a set of bagpipes. <laughs> Is that big wife corporal in here? What? The old lady laughing at dawn. Nah, it's all clear. Come on. Good. Get some now. Come on in. <laughs> Hello, Bruce. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Corporal Wendy. Just Wendy. Move on. <laughs> I see magnificent obsession is on at the Camp Cinema tonight. Oh, I? Yes. Rock Hudson and Jane Wyman. Very romantic, apparently. Is it? Yes, I wondered if you were going to see it. Me? No, no, I, I'm busy tonight. It's on all week. Great. <laughs> uh, well, be seeing you. Dum 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 da dum. Dum dum da dum. When's the great day then, Bruce? Shut up. <laughs> There for you. Thanks very much. <laughs> oh, she's buying him presents now. <laughs> it's gonna be funny having a wife who outranks you, Bruce, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, she'll be able to order you to the bedroom anytime she feels like it. Get <laughs> me rotten teases. Let's change the subject. All right, fair's fair. Dum dum dum. dum, dum. dum. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that first aid lecture was interesting. So did I. Only wish I'd remained fully conscious throughout. Interesting waste of time. Why? All that first aid rubbish. What's the point of it? Well, to equip us with expertise in case of emergencies. Emergency? Listen, from what I've seen of medics in a ref, all they do is push pills and empty bedpans. Talking of bedpans... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, rat bags. Well? All got your water wing flown up, have you? Why, expecting rain, are we? No, you great mouthy Ted. If you bothered to look at your timetable, you would know that we are all going swimming this afternoon. Swimming? Oh, terrific. Oh, you like swimming, do you? Yes, love it. In that case, you can be the one that stays behind and cleans your sleeping quarters out. Oh, that's not fair, Corporal. Why me? Oh, that's not fair, Corporal. Why me? Why you? You sit there reeking a cheap scent, your face plastered in makeup, and ask me that. That's an outrageous thing to say, Corporal. I found out what a Nance is, you know, and, and Ken isn't. <laughs> Can you swim, Lily? <laughs> yes, I can. Blast! I'll tell you what, Corporal, let Ken go. I'll stay behind him, Bull. Now, why should you want to do that? Well, me and water don't get on too well. <laughs> do you mean you never wash or you're frightened of drowning? <laughs> well, I'm a bit scared, actually. But don't worry, Bruce, we'll keep an eye on you. <laughs> like Sergeant Wells won't let you come to any harm. He's a very responsible chap. That is true. Oh, well, and that is... <laughs> Shame I'm taking swimming instead of him, really. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Shame I bear grudges and all. Particularly towards people who nigh on pull me foot off, bang me head on the floor and try to squash me nuts in first aid classes. <laughs> See you in the deep end, jockstrap. <laughs> oh, God.
Women is not to be afraid of getting your face in the water like this. This will give you confidence, and of course, when you become more proficient, this will streamline your progress from the water. I mean, we've all seen bad swimmers, haven't we? Arms playing, head waving about. No, nope, the head should be down, down, down. <laughs> down, I said. So, for myself personally, when they asked me to be in the Olympics, I used to hold my breath once and do 100 yards. Now, how is this possible, I hear you ask? It's very simple. I held my breath with the head down. Here ain't no corporal, you're dragging him! Don't be ridiculous. He's faking. He's unconscious. Get him out! Get him out! You bloody fool, he stopped breathing. Don't you call me a bloody fool. <laughs> he hasn't, has he? <laughs> breathe. I order you to breathe. <laughs> what can we do now? <laughs> Hold his nose holes open. Out of the way. Oh, keep back. <laughs> keep back. Out of the way. <laughs> A lot of fuss about nothing, eh, girls? <laughs> Get him dressed and back to camp. Keep him warm. Put him to bed this afternoon. And if anybody wants to know where he is, tell them to come and see me. Oh, well, come on! Thanks, Thank Corporal. you very much, Corporal. Come on, first mate. Come on. <laughs> oh, God, blimey, it was only a joke. I mean, if he can't hold his breath for ten seconds... <laughs> Let's see how long you can hold yours. <laughs> There's only one way to get out, and that's to get some in. Get some in! Back, will you? Why, what's the matter? What's happened? It's that bloody madman, Marsh. He almost drowned him. What? It was awful. Marsh held his head underwater. Yeah, pretending he was teaching him. Bruce actually stopped breathing. I'll tell you something, Kent. He'd never started again if that Corporal Wendy hadn't been there. She'd done this artificial respiration on him. Really terrific, she was. I knew Marsh would do something like this. 
I tell you, if he was on What's My Line, he'd have to sign in a psychopath. Right. <laughs> Uh, come in. Hello, Bruce, mate. How's it going, mate? <laughs> well, what are you lot looking at? What's so surprising about a bloke coming to see his friend? Friend? Yes. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to use the word. Oh, I know it's not fashionable among you young cynical kids of today, but it means a very great deal to me. Chocolates, mate. Well, I don't hear any ticking. <laughs> that is it, you see. That is why I sought out this man's company, because of his wonderful sense of humour. Hey, all the soft centres are gone. Ha, <laughs> See? He's still joking. Now, this mate of mine is the sort of man who can enjoy a bit of horseplay with another man and not bear any grudges about any little accidents that might happen in the horseplay. <laughs> You're frightened he's going to report you, aren't you? But me? No. What, a mate with a wonderful sense of humour, eating chocolates that another mate has given him? <laughs> he wouldn't even think of such a thing, would you, Lecky? <laughs> I'm not going to report you, Corporal. Oh, no. Here they come, the old tears. <laughs> <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't do this. <laughs> not that off! I am deeply touched here. Bloody hell, you must be if you expect us to believe you. Here, here. I have to say, Corporal, that I'm quite sickened by this blatant display of hypocrisy. Up your pipes! <laughs> Lecky's not being cynical, he's just being a forgiving bloke. That's got nothing to do with it. The only reason I'm not reporting you is I'd come off worse in the end. Oh, sure, they'd do you for today, but you'd still have the whole course to do me back again. And you would. You've got more brains than I thought you had. I'm eating a bothered with the chocolates. <laughs> Give us them back! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm right, aren't I? He'd have got me. And then he'd have got you. Then he'd have got us all together. Then he'd have got us all separately. Then me again. Then you. All then... right, all right, Bruce. We get the picture. It's always going to be like this with us and Marsh, isn't it? Those two stripes of his do make him asbestos. If only they'd given me that commission. Oh, shut up. Don't start that again. Well, perhaps we'll be corporals one day. Then we'll flipping see what flipping foot the flipping boot is on. He's no good having a swearing fit, Matthew. <laughs> No, we can't wait that long. <laughs> Corporal Wendy! Oh, God, where? <laughs> no, no, no. Look, Corporal Wendy is a corporal. Right! And she saw everything that happened at the bar, right. didn't she? And she's got no cause to fear Marsh. And she loves Bruce. No, don't. So let's get her to report it. Right, let's find her. Come well, on. It shouldn't be difficult. She's bigger than most things in the camp. <laughs> uh, uh, lads, but no, let's talk about this. But. There she is. Come on. Why? We found her. Yes, we have, but I've been thinking we could be asking for a thick ear apiece. Why? Stripes, Matthew. That's why both her and Marsh have both got stripes. It's like belonging to a Chinese tong, innit? You mean stripes might be thicker than water? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be. Now, I've been thinking, I mean, look, if we ask her to shop one of her own, I mean, she might just chuck us through the wall, might she? But mightn't her affection for Bruce outweigh all other considerations? Yes, of course. Yeah. That five foot six inches of Scottish passion is our trump card. Right, now, this is what we do, Ken. Yeah? You go over, dead casual, and you say that Bruce has been asking after her, right? Yeah. Right, then you slip in as to how uh, Bruce is hoping that she's going to shop Marsh, right? Yeah. Away you go. OK. Two half a mile and grass a Just a minute. <laughs> but why me? Oh, well, you're our spokesman, aren't you? Oh, no. Not with girls, I'm not. You're the expert with girls. Look, the girls I'm expert with have tight jumpers and loose morals. <laughs> they do not drink pints and look as though they could hammer the living daylights out of Rocky Marciano. <laughs> anyway, she don't go for my sort of type. She likes the more weedy type of bloke. <laughs> no, chaps, please. I don't think I can handle her. You don't have to touch her. You just get her to shop Marsh, right? Well, I'll go over if somebody else comes with me. Oh, come on. Let's all go. All right. Uh, hello, Corporal. Box of chocolates. 
Well, we've only got ourselves to blame, haven't we? He's in there now. Perhaps he's just passing the time of day? Oh, don't be so stupid. I can see his tail swishing from here. A hazelnut cluster, Wendy. <laughs> Ta. Do you know, I was just thinking, it was dead witty the way you chucked me in the water this afternoon. <laughs> I didn't half laugh. Oh, that's what you were doing. Oh, blimey, yeah. I love a joke, particularly in the swimming bars. You know, you do a joke on someone, someone does a joke back on you. It all evens up, doesn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> when it's a joke, yes. Oh, there you are, you see, all blokes together. Pardon? No, no, I know you're a woman, Wendy. <laughs> and a very attractive one, too, if I might say so. No, I'm not. Ah. Um, a strawberry fruit cup. <laughs> there you are, you see, there's another joke. <laughs> oh, I love them, I do. <laughs> As I say, it's all blokes together. No, girls together. No, Raph, that's it, Raph. All Raph together, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a waff. Oh, waff, Raph, Raph, Waff. What's the difference? Skirts. <laughs> you are a scream, Jean, you really are. Jean? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll keep getting you mixed up with Jean Crane. You know, the film star. Does it hurt your stomach at all? <laughs> what? All this crawling. Crawling? I don't understand. I thought I was just having a chat and a joke with a fellow corporal. You might have stripes on your arms, Sonny Jim, but you're not my idea of a corporal. So far as I'm concerned, you're a big dollop of lard with just about as much sense. Don't you dollop me, girlie! And how they ever let you on a medical course? A man who almost drowns a non-swimmer is beyond me. You are a disgrace. Oh, I am, am I? And just what do you propose to do about it, girlie? I've done it. I'll put in a report. <laughs> you cow! Give us me chocolate back! <laughs> Leave the chocolates. Oh. <laughs> now, get out of my sight, dollop. Now, you listen to <laughs> Blimey, that is what I call a woman. Oh, it's like a miracle, isn't it? She's going to report him and she squashed him like a fly into the bargain. <laughs> and she saved Bruce's life. We owe her a great deal. Yeah. Hey, do you think we should have a whip round and buy her something? Great idea, yeah. yeah. Hang on, now, it's a bit difficult to know what to get her, isn't it? I mean, you don't know what sort of thing she'd like best. Oh, hello. I think it's just walked in. Here, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce told me I've worked myself up to this. Good evening, Corporal Wendy. Hello, Bruce. Feeling better? Yes, thank you, Corporal Wendy. And I'd like to thank you for saving my life this afternoon. Oh, it's worth saving. And, uh, and, uh... Yes? And, uh... Yes? And if you would still like to see the film that's on at the camp cinema, I'd be honoured to escort you. You and me? Oh, well, if it's not on, you being a corporal and everything, I'll just... Oh, I'm not a corporal to you, Bruce. I'm a woman. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yes. And when you just stride in here and tell me that you're taking me out, any resistance I might have just crumbles. Come on! <laughs> There goes the noblest Scotsman of them all. Ian Kim. It's time for natural birth and natural death. Come in. Just tell you how to ask for natural death. Come in. So leave your mouth in laughing after now where you can win. Your victim of your fault will come to get some in. So you're in the RAF.